Hey, I've got another stack of books to recommend to you. These are preaching books. So these are books for preachers. If you want to know how to communicate God's Word, I guess a Sunday school teacher could, could probably uh, benefit from uh, some of the things in here too. But this is more specifically to the preacher. Uh, what uh, the preacher uh, is supposed to do is preach the Word, right? Uh, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, re exhort. Uh, so anyway, these are books to help you do that. This is one of my favorite books, and the, these are all books that I like, but these are, this is one of my favorite books on preaching. It is uh, by Brian Chappell, The Christ-Centered Preaching, Redeeming the Expository Sermon. And uh, R.C. Sproul said, as he did of many books, it is the best I have seen on this subject. You can see it right there. So the, the book is uh, Christ-Centered Preaching by Brian Chappell. What I like about this book um, is uh, he begins with with the theological background, of course, the uh, the why we need preaching and why uh, Christ-centered preaching is especially needed. But also uh, in here, he, he he outlines four ways to uh, interpret Scripture and preach Christ out of all the Scriptures. Um, uh, it's easy, uh, to preach Christ when the text is specifically talking about Christ. So in the gospels or, or in the epistles, when, uh, Paul or Peter or someone is, is express, explicitly speaking about Christ, then that, I mean, you can use that text and preach Christ, uh, very easily. But then there are those texts, uh, that, you know, that don't necessarily meet, uh, that criteria where Christ is not, uh, mentioned specifically. I mean, the whole book of Esther uh, doesn't even mention God, uh, much less Christ. So uh, how do you approach a text like that and, and still be able to preach Christ and him crucified from it? Well, he gives these four ways to look at, at these scriptures that don't specifically reference Christ um, to uh, um, be able to preach Christ from those scriptures. And that is, uh, first is predictive of Christ. Uh, so there, there are texts in the Bible that predict the coming of Christ. Uh, there are texts in the Bible that are preparatory for the coming of Christ. Uh, there's also texts in the Bible that are reflective of Christ, and then texts that are resultant of the gospel. And I won't go into all of those things now, but uh, you can sort of see the uh, the idea that he's getting at here that Christ is present there in all the scriptures and Christ and him crucified can be preached from all the scriptures and should be preached from all the scriptures. But um, at the same time, uh, I, I would rather you just buy the book and, and uh, go through it yourself. And, uh, you know, part of it's uh, technical. It is a, it, it's a widely used textbook, or at least it used to be uh, for preaching. Uh, but anyway, uh, Go ahead and get that book. Uh, it'll be a great help to you. Another book on preaching I, that I especially like is, um, I told you I was reading um, the John Piper's new book on expository exaltation, uh, and it's a fantastic book. I'm, you need to get it and read it, over, but I've already showed it to you. But this is his first book on preaching. It is titled The Supremacy of God in Preaching by John Piper. It's not a technical book. It's 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 basically just going into the fact that that uh, God should be supreme in our preaching. Uh, if God is not supreme in our preaching, then we're missing the point. Uh, we've missed the whole point of, of Scripture. Uh, and that's a, that's a needed corrective even today. Uh, because we're still in the middle of a fight against uh, the health, wealth, and prosperity gospel, which concentrates on what you can get and what the gospel does for me and 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 what I want. Uh, we're in the middle of the whole Joel Osteen uh, time where, where, you know, every sermon's about how we can live our best life now. I shouldn't be the focus of the sermon. Jesus is the focus of the sermon. God is supreme in preaching and uh, he shows how that he is supreme in the trinitarian nature uh that that it is god who speaks uh and in in scripture and and then goes through 
uh, the work of the Son. The sermon is about Christ and that it's empowered by the Holy Spirit. So it is, it is a fantastic book on preaching. Another book is one, by one of our Franklin Baptist Association pastors, uh, Ann Burt Decker. Uh, Dr. Herschel York uh, wrote this book on preaching. Uh, this, is, this is pretty much a straight textbook on preaching. It, it, it is fantastic, and there are some great uh, things in here. It, it's a fantastic book. I, I mean, just getting down into the nuts and bolts of exactly how you do everything, this is, this is, this is great for that. But there, there are a couple of other things that I took away from that, from this book that I, I really, that I think has helped my preaching, um, especially uh, as I was uh, pastoring in, in Tennessee. And, and one of those things um, was that uh, the whole structure of the sermon uh, should fit together. Uh, that, I mean, that's, that's a, uh, uh, an easy thing to say. Uh, but for even if you you're you're taking your text and you're going through your text and you you're outlining everything and you've got point one and point two and point three and they're all connected, uh, they can still seem disjointed as you're as you're speaking and and the connection may be lost to your hearers. And so one thing that uh, this book uh, taught me to do is to uh, write out my connecting sentences between points. So recap point one and show how it flows in to point two and then take off with point two. And then as you get to the end of point two, if you've got a third point, then, then, you know, you want, want to sort of shortly recap one and two and show how they both lead into three and how they're, how everything is connected. It, it, it's a very good uh, practice. Just, just write that out and make sure you've got the connections there. And I'll, when I take, uh, my notes to the pulpit. I take I take notes. I don't I don't take a full manuscript, but it'll just be an outline. And the only things that I will have written on there are going to be my introduction, my points, and my conclusion. However, in between those points, I always bring those connecting sentences to the pulpit with me because. I, it's very tempting just to say, okay, I'm done with point one, now on to point two, and, and it's like you're on a totally different subject. But show how it all connects and how it flows together. Uh, that's a very good thing. Then um, there, there's some more stuff on on uh, uh, putting your sermon together like that in there, but it, it is it's a great book. Um, there, there's another there's another thing that that I learned from this book, and that is that your application is not just saying Jesus died on the cross for your sins, therefore you should repent and believe the gospel. So the application is not just repent and believe the gospel. The application goes a little bit further than that in that it explains the benefits after you take the action. So your message is, Christ died on the cross for our sins. He rose again on the third day. He's ascended into heaven. He's coming again. What? How should you respond to this? Well, your action is repent and believe the gospel. What benefits do you get from that? You have eternal life. You have uh, the Holy Spirit indwelling you. You have all the gospel promises now that are yours. You are co-heirs with Christ. You're a joint heir with Christ. When Christ returns, you'll be with him. You will live eternally with him in, in heaven. So there, I mean, the, the benefits are, are, are huge, right? So, so when you preach a sermon and, and I'm just using that as a simple example, don't, don't just stop and say, okay, uh, the sermon is, uh, uh, love your wife. Uh, how do you love your wife? Well, uh, the application is don't commit adultery. Don't give your yourself over to these other things. Don't just stop there. Go on to the benefit. Okay. Go on to what, what does that create? How does that help your wife? How does that help you have, uh, and, and fulfill the application in that way. So anyway, I highly recommend preaching with bold assurance. Another, uh, book that I like, this is, uh, I would call it a biblical theology of preaching. Uh, so 
Preaching the Whole Bible as Christian Scripture by Graham Goldsworthy. I'll hold it up here so you can so you can see the name uh, better. Graham Goldsworthy. All right. Preaching the Whole Bible as Christian Scripture. This, this is, it is so profound and so simply written. It is, it is amazing. Um, uh, Goldsworthy in this book uh, puts together a picture of preaching from the whole Bible and and how to preach from the whole Bible. It's not technic it's not a technical textbook type thing, uh, really, but it, it shows uh, the connections. It it explains the connections uh, from the Old Testament to the uh, from the law to the prophets to historical writings to all of those all of those things in the old testament and how they connect to the gospel and also connects the new testament back to the gospel because you get into apocalyptic literature or or the epistles and and uh it, it shows how that that connects back to the old testament and how it is all fulfilled in christ and it, it, it's a fantastic book to read um a, a good a great book uh, he's also got a a a three-part series uh gospel and kingdom uh i can't remember the titles but but just look up graham goldsworthy and and you can find those books as well they're they're great um another book i like on preaching this is the word became fresh by dale ralph davis Dale Ralph Davis has written some of my all-time favorite Old Testament commentaries. Uh, he is able to turn a phrase like nobody else that that I know. maybe maybe John Piper can do it, but I, I think Dale Ralph Davis gets him beat on that. Uh, he is able to turn. I mean, just the title of the book, "The Word Became Fresh," uh, playing off of uh, the words of John in uh, John chapter one: "The Word became flesh and dwelt among us." Uh, this is this is a book about how to preach from Old Testament narrative text. Uh, it, it's a fantastic book. It it shows you uh, really uh, how to get in behind the scenes because you come to a text. One of the texts that he that he uses here uh, as an example is Genesis twenty nine and thirty, and this is the story of how uh, Jacob, Leah, Rachel. Uh, Bildad, I can't remember the other the other concubine's name off the top of my head, but there, you know, Jacob is is uh, going into all these women. And they're having having children. There there's huge fights between Leah and Rachel. Rachel is is the wife that Jacob wanted. Leah is the one that he got first, and then he had to work uh, seven more years to get to get Rachel. Or, I mean, it's a huge, it's a huge, uh, big mess. And then, uh, because Rachel is barren, she can't have children. She, she says, well, take my handmaiden. And, and then, uh, Leah gets in on it. And, and so there, the, you got kids coming from everywhere. Uh, at, at one point, uh, uh, the sisters there want to, to barter for who gets to sleep with Jacob, and so they, uh, one sister gives the other mandrake so that she can, so that she would have the right to sleep with Jacob that night. Uh, it, I mean, it's it's all a big twisted dysfunctional mess, really. Uh, but the point of that passage is not polygamy is wrong. Uh, don't get into this. See what happens when when you got more than one wife. The point of the text is that even against the backdrop of all of that ugly, dysfunctional family, everything that's going on there, God is faithful to his promise to Abraham. Abraham's seed is multiplying. And so by the end of that, of that story, uh, you've, got, you've got the 12 tribes of Israel ready to go. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a great book. And so, and so uh, he helps you look behind the text and see what's what's actually there what's actually the point here not because there are so many details that, that sometimes all of those details can get in the way uh, of what uh, the the writer of scripture is is saying so 
the word became fresh. Del Ralph Davis. Also, buy his commentaries. Commentaries are fantastic. Uh, the last book I want to recommend to you is this one. J.C. Ryle, Simplicity in Preaching. Um, I'm not going to go into a lot on this one because it's, I mean, the title says it all. Simplicity in Preaching. Um, this book, what, here, here's the one thing I, probably that, that has been most helpful for me out of this book. He recommends reading Pilgrim's Progress at, over the course of your ministry. Read it multiple times. Every couple of years, every two or three years, read through Pilgrim's Progress. Uh, the reason for that is John Bunyan, of course, wrote Pilgrim's Progress. It's a, it's a good book. It's a true book. But it is very simply written. It is written in such a way that anybody can understand it. It, it is a great book uh, for this. And so as you're reading these simple truths in John Bunyan, you can go back and bring that into your preaching. Uh, not necessarily bringing the text of Pilgrim's Progress in, but the simplicity that John Bunyan uses in describing the Pilgrim's Progress uh, can come into your sermons and you can... You can teach that. You can you can be simple in in your as you write out your sermons, as you outline everything, and, as, and then as you present it, make sure that you're using simple words. Don't get into things, you know. You, your congregation probably doesn't know Latin, Greek, Hebrew, or or anything, and and you may not know those languages either. And and it does no good to to throw those those terms out there. I, I don't think. Uh, I, you know, I went through a time in my life where I wanted to, to throw as much, uh, language out there as I could. And, uh, but you want, you want your, your sermons to be understandable. You want people when they leave the church to know what you said. You don't want them to go away saying, boy, he's a really, really, really smart guy. You want them to go away saying, this is what God has done for me. This is what God requires of me. And this is what God gives to me. Uh, those are the, that's the goal of preaching. Uh, to, to aim for the hearts and ears of those uh, who are in your congregation. So anyway, those are recommendations. I have books for preachers and preaching. So there, there's a lot more, of course. There's, uh, I've, got, I've got a shelf over there full of books, Expository Preaching by the Master Seminary Staff, uh, where John MacArthur's the president uh, of the uh, college and seminary, and then uh, um, Biblical Preaching by Haddon Robinson, Hymn We Proclaim uh, by Johnson. There, there, there's, I mean, there's all kinds of books on preaching, but these are some that I think are particularly helpful, uh, or they have been for me anyway. Thank you. Have a good day. God bless.